All right, so who is ready to throw up in their mouths? And I only mean that somewhat literally, but I also, there's a bit of like literal talk in there. So for, let's get into it. So obviously I talk a lot about eating windows and fasting and dry fasting and water fasting, but this video is not going to be about when to eat. It's going to be about different, um, even more things. I'm going to stack even more things on this. So we're going to talk about the intestines. Okay. Stomach, small intestines, large intestines. You get the idea. You can look up the di diagram yourself if you want. Let's talk about stress, okay? Really quick. So this involves um, emotional stress or physical stress, okay? So we're talking about the gym. We're talking about going to a job interview. We're talking going about a job you hate. We're talking about doing things that you don't like doing. We're talking about having hard conversations. We're talking about any sort of stressful situation that you know will arise. Now, here's what's interesting about the digestive system and emotional or physical stress. Okay, even if you're even if you're going to work and you have a manual labor job, this is very important. What happens when your body is stressed? Your small intestines, your intestines shuts down. It actually stops working. Okay, and it it, it all the juices, f for lack of a better word, freeze. Okay, and the food starts to putrefy. Okay, now obviously everything is going. Gravity is still pulling things down. So when it's supposed to be, imagine like this is the intestinal wall and it's supposed to be kind of bouncing around and mixing with the um, alkaline juices and the bile, okay? It just goes, ah, oh, da, da, and just turns into this sludge and just starts working its way down, okay? Now, this happens, it, this is if you've just eaten, okay? And then you walk, like you're at work and you're like, oh, I gotta go, I gotta go. And you quickly get like a Subway sandwich or whatever, even a salad or like a piece of meat and you quickly eat it while you're working and then you're straight back to work, that's a very bad idea. And here's why, and we're gonna, we're gonna connect this to tinnitus obviously as we always do, okay? So you've got good bacteria and bad bacteria in your stomach. This is a gross exaggeration of what it looks like, okay? So you've got good bacteria and bad bacteria. And we'll stick with the bad bacteria, which is because, you know, they're always fighting and keeping each other in check. The good bacteria even fight between each other as they fight between the bad bacteria, okay? So here's what happens when you get um, all that sludge that comes out. And this can take hours um, and days. And the symptoms will take years and years to arise, okay? And depending on what kind of person you are as well. As, for example, um, there's something called lipopolysaccharides, okay? Which is it normally is, is something that is um, a membrane attached to the outside of a, a bad bacteria cell, okay? And um, this is really not good. But the beautiful part about this is... Uh, we'll just call it LPS, lipopolysaccharides, okay, exist pretty much solely in the colon, okay? So this is the stomach, colon, intestines. But what happens is when the sludge gets down there, the bad bacteria, okay, that's come down here starts to putrefy, and then the bad bacteria that's supposed to be helping break down this putrefying food, which unfortunately the bile didn't break down because the small intestine um, where it's supposed to, the first point of entry happened, some little intestines shut down and just sludged it down. So unless you have a blockage here and it doesn't even get down, you're constipated. So it's made its way down to your colon, this undigested food smothered in bad bacteria. And all of a sudden the lipopolysaccharides severely and seriously and dangerously start to outweigh um, all the good bacteria. Okay, the good bacteria such as E. coli um, and stuff like that. And yes, E. coli is good for you. Just You can go take a look at it. It's very, very good for you. Um, even trichnosis, the parasite from pigs has been sh proven, okay, proven by Harvard, okay, Harvard, I don't trust for shit, anything that comes out of them, but they've been proven, okay, to cure people of their IBS, irritable bowel syndrome and Crohn's disease um, and ulcerative colitis, okay, because of digestion. Remember, any person, you right now, if you're a fully grown adult, you have about three to five pounds, depending on your weight, three to five pounds of bacteria inside of you. That's a lot, isn't it? So they've got a big task to do, okay? Anyway, so what happens is these lipopolysaccharides, your body is designed to contain these bad bacteria in your colon, as well as your good bacteria. There's a lot of activity, there's a hive of activity going on in here. Unfortunately, when the scales tip and the bad bacteria wins, the lipopolysaccharides, okay, secrete, not, they don't go up the intestines, they secrete into the bloodstream, okay, and the lymphatic system. Now, this is a fucking mess. 
Okay, now there's many different ways to do this, obviously. Of course, you can eat really bad. You can eat lectins. You can he eat um, too many cruciferous vegetables. Um, you can eat a high carbohydrate diet. You can have vegetable oils. Um, you can have pharmaceutical drugs. You can have antibiotics. And what happens is you'll actually break. Okay, this is one of the tightest cell walls exists in the colon. Okay, because remember in the intestines, we have relatively... Um, fl flexible cell walls to an extent, but not nearly as tight as the colon. Okay, the colon draws out water, it dries out the poo, the feces, it absorbs the last bit of nutrients. Okay, but what the real goal of the colon is, okay, we've done all the work now, we'll let everything through, but unfortunately, um, you can let lipopolysaccharides as well as many other seriously even worse bacteria through the body, okay, and there's even studies to show that this can actually, antibiotics taken by children and vaccines, if they get this into their system, then these cell walls in the um, colon break up and it can actually cause autism, um, autism like symptoms and autism and stuff like that. And you can, that's a fucking mess basically. So what happens is the lipopolysaccharides go out the bloodstream and unfortunately these lipopolysaccharides are so powerful, okay, that what do they do? They go to the brain, okay? Now the brain, thankfully, has a blood brain barrier which means that nothing can really get into it okay unless it goes up through the spinal fluid and there's there's multiple other ways to but we'll keep it simple for now these lipopolysaccharides let's imagine that this is like this blood brain barrier which is very tight they start hammering the blood brain brain barrier and they get in now these lipopolysaccharides can cause obviously swelling which can lead to tmj the skull plates and they can get in and cause heaps of problems within the brain um they can cause anxiety, stress, okay? And then what does that do? That feeds straight into the thyroid gland and goes to your adrenal glands, okay? And really hijacks the fight or flight mechanism, okay? And what's that gonna do? It's gonna mess with your sleep. And what's lack of sleep gonna do? It's gonna go right back and start effing with your brain. And this is the hormones and it's just a mess. But the real problem, okay, is that now there's a weakness in the blood-brain barrier and all the other toxins in your body can get in. Now, Humans perpetually, we, we, we're, we're absorbing toxins, we're getting rid of them, especially in today's world. Okay, and if you're not taking the right supplements, then what happens is, unfortunately, these lipopolysac... Look, we live stressful lives. This is going to happen to everybody. You know, I would say even maybe a couple of times a year, okay, the, uh, like a small amount of lipopolysaccharides are going to get through. Now, if you're a person suffering from tinnitus, right, your stress is going to be insurmountable. You're worried about the future. You're worried about what doctors say. You're worried about, will Liam's advice work for me? You're worried about where should I start? Should I do this? Blah, 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 blah. What should I do? And then so you're probably getting this shit a lot. And don't let this stress you out because I'm offering you a solution, okay? But you get the point I'm trying to make here. Stress equals a opening in the, a, a um, an issue with digestion. So first of all, let's not forget when your small intestine isn't working, <clears throat> you're not even getting the minerals and vitamins. Okay. You could eat super healthy, something that I recommend, for example, meat. Okay. And some vegetables and supplements. But first of all, your gallbladder and liver have to be working. But if you're stressed, you could, you could go and eat something and then go to the gym straight after. You're not going to do it. It's, uh, that's a joke. You should be sitting down, relaxing. I eat in total silence okay just looking out my window that's what i do and i feel like amazing after i eat because i know that um i well i feel amazing and then i realize oh it's obviously digested probably like two hours later i feel amazing and it lasts me longer i get no indigestion i don't have diarrhea or constipation perfectly formed bowel movements in case anybody was wondering okay so you get what i'm saying here so high carbohydrate diet will also do this as well as antibiotics um, antihistamines, anti-allergens, antidepressants, anything with anti in it, um, corticosteroids, benzodiazepines, antibiotics, quinolones, they're going to they're gonna set this off straight away, okay? And if you have candida overgrowth, yeah, just forget it. So now I want to um, give you guys a bit of a lesson. Some of you are obviously going to be much smarter than me on this, and some of you will probably be, you know, may, maybe not, and you'll just be interested to know. This is Huffington Post, which is, I think it's probably like, the 20th most um, traveled, for lack of a better word, website on the whole internet. It's huge. I'm pretty sure it's like translated into like 100 different languages. Anyway, so let's have a look at this. Um, they talk about lipopolysaccharides in this article. And this is when you're going to throw up in your mouth when you see how ridiculously corrupt this is. PhD, functional medicine nutritionist. Okay, lifestyle medicine expert. Okay, so let's get into this. What you need to know about a high fat diet. First of all, what the fuck is this? Does that look like a high fat diet to anyone? 
lactic acidosis, lactic acidosis, and what the hell is this shit in here? Okay? Maybe meat, but what is it covered in? What is that? Like, where is a little sliver of meat? How do I know this isn't some vegetable burger? Okay, but let's just, let's just put that aside. Let's just put that aside. Okay, now, there's one part I wanted to get to. It was a study. Here we go. Let me see. Let's go through it. The fuel source most commonly correlated with an increase in the bacteria that produce endotoxins is fat, okay? So that's bad with, with endotoxins that can spread to the brain once again, as we said before. Um, according to one study, so just one, okay? That's fine though. I'm, 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 I'm a pretty open guy, I really am. Consuming a high fat diet for four weeks led to a two to three times higher level of plasma, um, lipopolysaccharides concentrations, um, thanks to an increase in the proportions of lipopolysaccharides containing bacteria. Okay, so I guess what they're trying to say is high fats contain um, the bacteria that the lipopolysaccharides exist on the outer rim of the cell, basically. Okay, in this animal study, okay, so first red flag, it's not even a human study. Guys, do we work the same as cows? Do we work, do we work the same as pigs, crocodiles, birds? Okay. If it, was just, if it was cheaper to get crocodiles than it was mice, doctors would just use crocodiles. If it was cheaper to get, um, let's say, um, like some sort of foal or like house, if, if it was ethically, if people wouldn't get an uproar, if people did this on house cats, which they still do, they would use house cats. Anyway, so mice consumed a control diet. I don't know. So what's the control diet, first of all? Or a high fat, carbohydrate free diet consisting of. 72% fat from, hold on, 72% <laughs> fat from corn oil. Corn oil is not fat. Corn oil is a vegetable oil, okay? Corn oil is literally been shown again and again and again in humans to ruin your stomach. This is not fat. Fat in its purest form is animal fat. Go outside, shoot a cow in the face, cut it open, pull out the fat. That's where fat comes from, okay? Okay, 72% fat from corn oil and lard. So what percentage is the lard? Lard is fine, but you've still got 72% fat from, from corn oil. That's extremely toxic. And how much, what's, is, it, is it split in half? But you've still got the corn, Jesus Christ. 29% from protein. Okay, here we go. So what's the protein, okay? Protein burns like sugar. It's, it's, if you have too much of it, it's not good. High protein diets are not good. Remember, acetate, lactate, acetaldehyde, and ethanol are extremely toxic and it will ruin your stomach. And less than 1% from carbohydrates. So I guess it's not a zero carbohydrate diet, is it? For a period of four weeks, here we go. The high fat group had high levels of lipopolysaccharides compared to the control group. Well, of course they did because they're eating, where was it? The corn oil, I don't even know where it went. The corn oil, okay, which is just ridiculous. Oh, Jesus Christ. So you, you see what I'm saying here? It's not even a real... I don't know what this person thinks they're doing, okay? There's no... It's not humans. There's no real numbers. And I mean, Jesus Christ. So let's have a look. Yeah, so as I said before, it causes brain... It can cause brain issues. Uh, there we go. Autism, depression, all this stuff. It's not good. And lipopolysaccharides plays a huge role in it because it breaks down the blood-brain barrier and allows other toxins such as mercury in. If you have a mercury filling, okay, and you're eating corn syrup or high fructose corn syrup or corn oil, this is a problem. So you see what I'm trying to say here is that these studies, Huffington Post, New York Times, Harvard, if they're not done on humans in the first place, forget about it. And really, any, any study can be proven or disproven. It really, you could, guys, you just have to test it on yourself. I'm going to tell you to eat less vegetables and less fruit and more meat, but maybe that doesn't agree with you. Maybe you'd be better off having much more vegetables. Remember, as I said before, you have four to five pounds, um, depending on your age. A teenager is not going to have that, but somebody like me, I'm probably going to have about five pounds because I'm huge um, in, your, in your gut. Okay. Now those, those bacteria in your gut are calling the shots. Okay. They're giving you your, especially if you have bad bacteria like parasites, but that's a different video altogether. They're calling the shots. Okay. So they're, um, they're telling you, you're giving you cravings. They're telling you what to eat. Okay. They're, they're digesting food. They're either pooing out, they're either pooing out literal neurotoxins or they're pooing out helpful digestive, um, enzymes. Some parasites are good, by the way, they can actually eat food and they can eat about um, 
I think it's about there's I think it's E. coli can eat about no, sorry, it's trignosis can eat about 200 times its weight and it will only have about 10% waste product. And it really it helps with digestion. Because you've got to remember our digestive function, no, I think it's 90% of our DNA is foreign. It's not actually human. Okay? And if you're, if you're eating things like lectins and too, too much cruciferous vegetables, you're opening up that, um, the cell wall Okay, and you're letting them into the bloodstream, and they're just going to go straight to the brain. Okay, or other organs. They're going to cause, you know, calcification. They're going to cause toxins in the blood, and then you double that up with um, bread, rice, pasta, all these grains, and all and you're getting the waste products. So your arteries are dilating, the toxins are getting into the blood, lactate, acetate, ethan- uh, acetate, lactate, acetate, um, acetaldehyde, and ethanol, and you're causing a shitstorm of crap. Okay, and your brain is going to start. You're going to get anxiety, depression. As I said before, Alzheimer's. You can look look up any research by Georgia Ede or Doctor Boz on that, guys. You just can't. You just can't. I would go as to far as to say you just can't trust this stuff. I mean, who funded this study? Like, I, I'm not going to. You guys can feel free to go check it out. I'll I'll copy this thing so you can check it out. Anyone who's really interested. But like you know, you got to look up who who funded this study. I mean, it's like when you know the uh, America has. Um, one of the it has we have what well not we but America has so much corn they want to sell the corn oil so they literally pay companies to do research on the differences between corn oil and like avocado oil and olive oil and coconut oil to say that they'll just twist it and say corn oil is better because America doesn't have any coconut oil to sell to their public they just have corn oil. and they don't care about your health they don't give a shit they'll sell you whatever the fuck it doesn't matter anyway so I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something um if, you know, if anyone wants to go deeper in this and research it and see who paid for this, um, or I don't know who this lady is, okay? But once again, this doesn't mean anything to me. It really doesn't. And it shouldn't mean anything to you. I mean, you can look at what Aristotle said about, um, as he called it the triangle of persuasion or legitimacy. It's um, who you are, where you are, and what you're saying. So the PhD is great. That means that you've done the work and you know a lot. Um, where you are, Huffington Post, that's just, to me, that's just cancer on a website. And what you're saying, well, that's this is just ridiculous. And it's dangerous too. I think they even said how to yeah, here we go. So what can you what can you do? Concentrate on feeding the good bacteria, yep. And not the bad while also ensuring you create a healthy environment in your gut. Okay. Reducing Okay, well where are the steps? Okay, rich in vegetables. Well, I don't know about that. Fruit, I don't know. Okay, so this is just bullshit. Yes to the vegetables, but I would have, have a lot of people with tinnitus have hyperinsulinemia and they're diabetic type one, type two, or they're pre-diabetic. Okay, and I know a lot of people who I help can eat an apple and their tinnitus spikes through the roof. Okay, and vegetables, only some vegetables. You can't tell people to eat lectins if they have lipopolysaccharides running rampant. That'll just open up the walls worse and cause further problems. This is, this is what's so stupid. It doesn't matter if it... This is a marketing ploy, this whole article. Whole grains, okay? It doesn't matter if it's like whole grain. It's like saying, hey, here's a beer, which is, um, I don't know, like 6% alcohol. Like, oh, I know there's too much alcohol. Okay, here's the same one. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's 5% alcohol and we used whole wheat barley instead. Super healthy. Oh, okay. People want to do what they want to do. And if you give them an excuse and, and legitimize their, you know, say, oh, yeah, legitimize their concerns and say, here's a solution to that. They know it's bullshit. But if you give them a reason, if you allow them, if you give them like information that allows them to follow what their, you know, what their brain wants to do which is normally hijacked by the negative gut bacteria in their stomach, as we just looked at, then they'll do it, okay? Oh, this is so ridiculous. Care should be taken when choosing to consume a ketogenic diet as there is insufficient evidence that this young should determine the impact of a high fat diet. That is so stupid. That's not true at all. It's been proven again and again and again that ketogenic diet is extremely healthy. And whatever the hell that this see this is the ketogenic diet is the high fat diet. This with the the corn um, the corn oil is incredibly that's a vegetable oil that crystallizes in your bloodstream. Okay, cellulite and most most seen on women on the back of their thighs. That's 
crystallized um, vegetable oils, okay? And processed foods. Because remember, all, all McDonald's and restaurants, and they all use the, ch the cheapest stuff. They use tasteless um, vegetable oils because it doesn't matter. Anyway, we'll just end it there, whatever. <laughs>